scripture reading today is from Luke. It's Luke 5, verses 4 through 11. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into, into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. As they came, he filled both boats so that, they, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down on, at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought all when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Amen. March 15, 2020. Do you all remember that day? Well, I'll, I'll give you a, a hint. I mean, it, was a, it was just a month short of two years ago. It was a Sunday. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was a bit of a special Sunday for us. We were having a community lunch that day after this service. Uh, the attendance was down a bit by uh, all three services because of something that we had recently been hearing about called COVID-19. Has anyone had something about that? Over now, I remember that day, of course, because that was the last Sunday that we were able to meet in person for 14 months. Uh, that was when our time of being away from one another had just begun. And of course, we're all not still back together. We have friends watching on Facebook Live. As our church family, uh, as a church family, we had given up so much of what we enjoy as a church community. Do you realize that when we celebrate Easter, together this year, together in person. It will be the first time that we've done it together in person since 2019. Oh. That is a three-year span. But as you know, it wasn't only things surrounding church that we had to give up. So many aspects of our lives have had to change. I love to eat in restaurants, and I can't believe how long it was that restaurants couldn't be open. Some of my favorite restaurants even closed during the pandemic, and so we'll never be able to go to them. We gave up so much, going out into public with a, without a mask, hugging our loved ones. We gave up touching things without wearing gloves, visits with friends, theater, movies, concerts. We saw some wild hairdos. We did. You know, they, when the beauty salons and the barber shops closed. You know, uh, many said goodbye to grocery stores, and those of us who still went to the grocery stores did so with a lot of anxiety. And we discovered that uh, we, had taken, uh, uh, we had taken the availability of paper towels and toilet paper very much for granted. And that was just the beginning of what we gave up. In today's story, the disciples gave up a lot, but they gained so much as well. And although we've given up a lot, we also in turn have gained. I mean, wow, although I don't retire of it, uh, Zoom is a very useful tool. Uh, we've learned that the elbow bump is probably a better idea than the handshake. But we can take away even more important things as well. We learn not to take our time with our loved ones for granted. We learn to enjoy the simpler things like walks through our neighborhood and spending time with our families. We've learned to care for our neighbors. And we've learned a little bit about what's really important to each of us. These are the rainbows that we received throughout our reign. Today's scripture story is one about some of Christ's disciples deciding to follow him. And they left everything behind to do so, giving up everything that they were used to. But there's a lot that happens in the story before that. It's a story of faith. Uh, it's one following Christ's direction when they put down their nets where Christ asked them to. It's one of evangelism when Christ tells Simon that he will be catching people. But when I read the story, every time I read the story, I'm always struck by its last line. Not only do the disciples decide to follow Jesus, we're told that they left everything behind to follow him. Their families, their friends, their homes, their businesses, they left everything and followed him. Now, I began this message by, by talking about all the things that we had to give up because of the pandemic. But we really didn't have a choice, did we? I mean, we were and we are restricted in some places because of circumstance. 
But the disciples in today's story, they made a decision to follow Christ. And what's more, we're told they did it immediately. In an instant, they decided to follow Jesus. And with that, they let go of so much. They left so much. You know, our decision to follow Jesus comes with much of the same. To follow may not have been an immediate decision for one of all of you, but your decision to follow Jesus might have been a long process. But no matter whether you made a decision quickly or over some time, our walks all have one thing in common. Our following Christ requires that we let some things go, that we leave some things behind, just like the disciples. The first thing I think about when I think about letting go of something to follow Christ is loneliness. What a comfort it is to know that when we accept Christ into our lives, we are never alone. How lucky are we that through every twist and turn of our lives, our walk is never a solitary one. In times of trouble and in times of rejoicing, we can always be fully confident that Jesus is with us. He guides us and he hears our prayers. I know that there have been some times in my life where they were the lowest times, the lowest of the lowest part of my life, and I could easily have felt lonely. But just knowing that Christ lives in my heart and is guiding me, that reminded me that I'm never really alone. Another reason following Christ will uh, allows us to go uh, uh, to leave a loneliness behind is because, for instance, my walk with Christ involves a walk with all of you. Because we follow Christ, we're able to come here to this place and develop a relationship, develop a family of others who are followers as well. Our decision to follow Christ came with a great, big bonus prize. And that is a church family who cares for us, a church family who prays for us and checks in on us, a family that loves us and cries when we cry and rejoices when we rejoice, a church family that never lets us feel alone. Now, another thing that we get to leave behind, let go to our walk with Christ, is fear. The message of Jesus Christ is one of faith. And it is that understanding of faith that can help drive away our fears. I once read something about how a ship was built many years ago. And when the shipbuilders, what they would do to find and prepare the masts for sailing ships. Apparently, they would go out into the forest and they would find the tree that they wanted to use to make the perfect mast for their ship. And when they found the perfect tree, surprisingly, they did not chop it down. Instead, they would chop down and clear out all the other trees surrounding it. I know, hopefully they used those trees for other parts of the ship, but that being said. Anyway, they left this one perfect tree just standing there with none of the other trees around it to protect it from the wind and from storms. And as the tree continued to mature, because it was exposed to the elements, the tree would gain great strength. It gained the kind of strength that a mast would need to be able to stand up to storms out on the sea while holding a large sail. This is much like the faith we develop through following Jesus Christ. Our walk with Christ and the faith that comes from it continue to build our strength. The closer we walk, the closer we follow Christ, the sturdier our faith builds, leading us stronger to face those storms when they occur, and allowing us to let go and leave fear behind. And finally, the last thing I want to mention today that we are able to leave behind when we follow Christ is hopelessness. The hope of Christ is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us. Now, when I think about the importance of the hope of Christ, I'm reminded of a story surrounding a tiny little town in Maine called Flagstaff. In 1950, there were plans to build a dam on the Dead River, that was the actual name of the river, the Dead River that was right next to Flagstaff. They were trying to enlarge Flagstaff Lake. Now, ironically, to enlarge Flagstaff Lake, they needed to completely flood the town of Flagstaff. <laughs> the town was notified about this for about a year before, and although everyone didn't immediately relocate, one thing did happen. About six months before the dam was to be built, all improvement and repairs throughout the entire town suddenly came to all. The citizens of Flagstaff figured, what is the use of painting a house that's going to be underwater for six months? 
They wondered why repair anything in the whole village if the village is going to be wiped out. So week by week, the entire town became more and more broken down. And when he was asked about it, one of the residents said, where there is no hope for the future, there is no power in the present. Aren't we blessed to have Christ as our power in the present? It is the hope that Christ brings that allows us to see a bright future. And going back to what I began with, when we were forced to give up so much over the past two years, seeing loved ones be out in public, in person worship and hugs, it was the hope through Jesus Christ that allowed us to see the future and continues to allow us to see the future where all of this can be behind us. You see, that's the difference between faith and hope. Faith is the knowledge that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and hope allows us to see that light. May each of our walks with Christ grow stronger with every step. May we follow him more closely with each passing day. And may we always be grateful for that which we leave behind and for all that we gain. We pray with you.